everyone, it's Paige. Welcome back to my channel. We are actually going to an event at Bushy Run Battlefield in Westmoreland County, Pennsylvania. Uh, I used to go here a lot as a kid and I haven't been back in a while, but I've never been to the event that we're going to today. Basically, it's a used book sale, a car show, and a flea market all mixed into one. So there are quite a few cars here. Uh, you can't really see. I'll show you later. So let's walk around and see if we can find anything good today. My name's Henry Bowden, and I work here at Bush Run Battlefield as one of the tour guides and reenactor. This is uh, the only recognized Native American battlefield in Pennsylvania, and all the volunteers are really friendly, really helpful. So if you're looking for a great place to hang out for a little while, come on up. Even if we're not open, you can tour the, the uh, battlefield and follow the trails and do a little bit of hiking. Okay, this is Bushy Run Winery. Uh, we're located in Harrison City. We've been uh, selling our wines for the past nine years. Uh, we specialize in local wines. We try to keep uh, our money here, uh, uh, helping out our local farmers. So come on down and uh, give a taste to us. Hi, Julie Wenick with the Maple Lodge. Our maple farm is based out of Salzburg and Slickville area. We have about a 1600 tap farm. Uh, we've been making maple syrup for over 10 years. So I'm a second generation maple sugar, as long as my two sons here are third generation. Uh, we're building our website, we've been going to some area festivals, and we're just trying to get our business off the ground, so thanks. <laughs> Okay, so we just left, secured some maple syrup cotton candy, which I will try. And I also got five books. I paid $13 because hardbacks were $3 and paperbacks were $2. It smells really good. It smells like maple. Pretzels, whiskey sticks. Okay, I'm not gonna be nearly as good at this as Paige. Okay. Oh man. Well, I'm gonna gain many calories from this. Really good. It is 
wow, I'm being taken, taken for an adventure. Oh my gosh, I'm just, I, I don't even know what to say right now. This is too much. It's too much for my brain. All right, so we are back, not home, because we are dog sitting for my dad. Um, we're actually dog sitting his two dogs, Max and Ginger. This is Ginger. They're at Myrtle Beach all week. But I thought, like usual, I could take a little bit of time now to wrap up the books that I got. Actually, while I was in the visitor center, I didn't have reception, so I wasn't able to check the reviews on all of the books that I got. I just had to do it the old-fashioned way and look at the <laughs> description and see if I felt like I would like it. The first one I got is Since We Fell by Dennis Lehane. This is a suspenseful mystery thriller. There is a wind chime next to me, so it will be making noise the whole time. I picked this up because, first of all, it's in great condition. Um, but also, I realized that this author is the same one who wrote Shutter Island. I've never read that book, but I have watched the movie several times, and it is amazing. It's one of Troy's favorites, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Leonardo... So the only thing I know about this book is that it follows a journalist who has some sort of breakdown in her career uh, which results in her kind of becoming this recluse and then one rainy afternoon her whole life changes and she is sucked into a conspiracy going off with very little information but knowing what he wrote before and that's it. I just picked it up. <laughs> After that, I picked up Monster by Frank Peretti. Again, great condition. Apparently, this is categorized as a mystery thriller, horror, science fiction, Christian fiction book. So this follows a man named Reed who wants to go out on this big camping trip into the forest. He organizes this whole thing and goes with his wife and as they're out there they hear this weird piercing screaming in the night and Reed wakes up to watch his wife be carried off by some sort of monstrous thing. I love a good forest horror. We'll see it, what the twist is if there is one. Um, sounds kind of interesting. Okay next up found this book, Room, by Emma Donahue. Troy and I actually watched the movie Room, which is based off of this book. This is from the perspective of a five-year-old named Jack, who has only lived in one room his entire life with his mom, his ma. Jack loves the room that they live in, but his ma hates this room because it is where she has been held captive for the past seven years. She was kidnapped at 19 years old and two years later had Jack in this room. I'm assuming just equally as hard to read as the movie was to watch, but maybe I'll try it anyway. Okay, so I found this novel. I've never read a Nora Roberts novel, but I first of all was just kind of intrigued by the cover of this one. Um, it's not like the best cover, don't get me wrong, but it's like interesting looking. This is Dark Witch. It is the first book of the Cousins O'Dwyer trilogy, and this is a paranormal romance. It follows Iona, I think is how you pronounce her name. Iona is very talented with handling horses, and she's raised by her Irish grandmother. Later on in life, she decides that she's going to take a big leap and move to Ireland. When she arrives, she is actually offered to stay at her cousin's house and stables, uh, where she becomes a stable hand. As she settles in at this ancestral home, a great evil seems to stir in Ireland that she has to uncover and defeat, maybe. I'm not sure. but. It sounded fun, and there's this inside cover, which is kind of pretty, too. Finally, I found this little paperback of The Light Between Oceans by M.L. Steadman. I'd heard of this book before because I believe it was, yeah, it was turned into a movie with Michael Fassbender, Rachel Wise, and Alicia Vikander. Um, never saw the movie, and I hope not to, at least until I've read this, but this is a historical fiction novel, has great reviews, follows a man 
recently um, retired from war. His name is Tom. He and his wife end up relocating to a lighthouse in Australia where he becomes the lighthouse keeper. Um, the two of them try desperately to have a child and they don't manage to do so. And then one day, years later, his wife hears a baby's cries and they leave the lighthouse to find a boat wrecked on the sand with a dead man and a living baby. Tom wants to report this incident and take the infant onto the mainland, but his wife really wants to keep the child, so they end up just adopting the child without reporting anything until years later they go back to the mainland and find out that that choice very drastically affected one of the people there. Those were the five books that I got. Troy's like, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> this bird that's been chirping this entire time is now my friend. I've named him Tom after the lighthouse keeper. But that is all for now. So if you liked this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads. You can also follow the wonderful people that were featured in this video at Bushy Run. Please join my Discord channel called Paging Through Club, where we read a book monthly. This month we are reading Don't Go Baking My Heart. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you back here very, very soon. Bye!